What's up YouTube? Today I want to do a bit of a sound design tutorial with the Arturia Micro Freak. So this is actually one of my favorite synths in my collection because it's actually so versatile. There's so many different synth modes and you know just the combination of the synth with a reverb pedal you can get some really really good sounds out of it. So I want to talk about three sound design ideas for pads with the Micro Freak today. Let's dive in and have a look. So today I won't be using any digital effects, I'll just be using the reverbs from the Boss RV500. That being said is you can emulate most of these reverb sounds digitally in the computer. The reason I'm doing it here is just because it's much more hands-on and in front of me and I can kind of outline things a little bit easier for you guys when it's on, when it's off, etc. So just for you know argument's sake I want to show you a couple of the reverb sounds that I have loaded up. Um, I've just got a basic in a preset loaded on the Micro Freak at the moment. And I wanna show you what the reverb sound like and then we're gonna dive into some uh, actual sound design. So first up is something I call the harmonic sweep pad. So let's set the oscillator mode over to harmonic, obviously. And what we're gonna do here is make use of the uh, oscillator's ability to sweep through all of the audible harmonics. This makes for really nice pad sounds because it can make these kind of almost twinkly type of sounds. So you can either sweep through this with a kind of long envelope or something like uh, modulated with sample and hold. So we're gonna try a couple of different examples real quick. So this is the basic sound of the harmonic oscillator. So what we want to do is first up, we want to make sure that our amp mod is on. And that means that the envelope is going to control the modulation of the amplitude of the sound. Obviously, because we're making pad sounds, we most likely are going to want a long attack. Okay, let's look at our modulation. So in this patch, like I said, we could either set up an envelope to control the sweep of this wave parameter, and this is gonna control the harmonic content of the sound. So I wanna set our cycling envelope over to envelope mode. That way it's actually not going to cycle, it's just gonna head through the modulation once. Then what we wanna do is we wanna assign that modulation over here. So we can use this assign parameter to get it to sync up to the wave click it down, and then this becomes the amount. Let's listen to what we've done so far. So did you hear how it quickly swept back down after it had finished the cycle in the envelope? We don't want that, so we wanna put the hold all the way up 
to 100%. That way it's going to hold at the top of the cycle. Um, and so did you notice like how it actually moved this knob without us having to do that? Um, and this is the speed that it takes to get through that uh, entire sweep. Okay, so let's assign some slightly more chaotic modulation to the harmonic content and perhaps the timbre as well. And I want to show you a little trick with the assign parameters over here. You can actually assign it as like a modulator to change the amount of modulation that's going through to another parameter, which is really, really handy. So what we could perhaps do is set a modulation that is a sample and hold and then with the cycling envelope, slowly modulate it inwards. So let's assign the uh, LFO to the amber as well as the wave. So you notice how that modulation kicks in right at the start of the sound. We might not want that, so what we could do is we could use the assign. So what you do is you hold it, and then you move the destination and then that becomes the amount of modulation for that destination. So if we land on the wave LFO matrix, then the assign becomes the amount. So then let's go back to cycle envelope and choose the amount of modulation that's going through to that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go back and reduce the amount of modulation just so that it starts kind of much lower and then fades in. Are you guys following? We've got the basis of the sound going. Um, what I like to do is, with pads especially, set, like I said, a long attack. We can set a long release. And then let's set it over to paraphonic mode. So what this allows us to do is the oscillators then work in polyphony. We're going to kind of negate the filters and stuff today because we don't necessarily need these in our pad patches. And we're going to make use of the polyphony of the oscillators. So what this allows us to do is, like, listen to the release of the sounds. If I turn it off. It doesn't allow the previous note to finish before it actually engages the next note. So if we put paraphonic on, it actually allows us to do that. So it's really nice for creating these kind of expressive pads. Okay, so that's about it for harmonic pad. Let's listen to what this sounds like with a couple of different reverbs. So let's just talk about saving a patch real quick. So what we do is we press save, and let's just say, for example, we want to save it into the slot. We just click the preset button in. Then it asks us what type of sound we want to save it as. Let's call this a pad. And now we can call the, we can name it over here using this alphabetic input over here, preset saved. Okay, let's listen to some reverbs.
so this type of sound really excels with, uh, you know, these spectral sounding reverbs, stuff like that, like shimmer stuff with pitch shifts and that kind of thing. Really excels with those types of reverbs. Cool, so that's it for sound number one. Let's move on to sound number two. So with this one, I kind of want to create a bit of a string-like sound. And my favorite way to do this on the Microfreak is to use the car plus strong algorithm because this actually has a bow simulation and it allows you to change the position at which the kind of bow is simulating exciting the string. So you can get some really string-like tones from it. Again, like I said, amp mod, long attack. Let's see what this sounds like. So again with this one, let's put it into paraphonic mode so we don't have that voice stealing going on. So this one's nice and simple, you know, but there's various different ways we can use the Microfreak to actually create more of an expressive way of playing the sound. Say, for example, we want more uh, pressure sensitivity. We're using the matrix. Let's assign the pressure sensitivity to this bow parameter because we can get some really kind of exciting tones out of it that way. Uh, so if we go to pressure and assign it to the wave, when uh, more of your finger touches the key, it applies more of that modulation. And we can apply it to the position as well. Or we can just apply kind of like some slow random modulation to that using the LFO. Man, it's crazy actually how expressive you can get with such a simple synth if you just know how to patch it correctly. Anyway, so that's it for patch number two. Let's call this the string. So let's head over to the save and uh, name this real quick. The cool thing about this is I actually never bother naming it like correctly. I'll always just like give it something like the first three letters so I know what the pad is and then just plug it into the computer, into the Arturia MIDI control center, and then just rename the patch there and give it all the correct settings and stuff there. I'm just gonna call it string, S-T-R-I, stree. So we've got harmonic and then stree. Okay, patch number three for today. This one is a chord pad kind of patch, which is obviously gonna make use of the chords mode over here in the Microfreak. So by default, I believe, okay, well, not today, Generally, well, well, from my experience, 
it kind of defaulted on minus. So the wave parameter, the wave parameter basically controls the, like the type of chord. And then this is the inversion or transposing of the chord. And then this chooses the type of waveform. So just these parameters alone, you can actually get really expressive with it. Um, I wanna show you how I usually set it up. So I usually set it up so that I have a little bit of pressure sensitivity changing the chord, for example, between like minor, minor seventh, minor ninth, etc. We can do that using the mod matrix. So over here, again, let's go to the pressure and set the pressure to modulate the wave. So this, it takes a bit of like fine tuning to get it perfect. You actually wanna hold your finger down until you hear it gets to the chord that you want to be like the final chord. Does that make sense? Okay, you see we've gone too far. Okay, so then again, with pads, long attack. That can give you some pretty cool, like spectrally, almost like color based type of sounds. The trick is though, like with these, like we're gonna be performing it. So let's not go all the way with the timbre control in terms of the matrix. Let's use, for example, like uh, an LFO, again on a slow random to modulate the timbre as well as the wave shape. Uh, what we can do, is we can use this to modulate the wave shape and we can use the cycling envelope in LFO mode to modulate the other parameters so that we've got this kind of like always different movement which we can get really expressive with. So with the shape parameter, we actually have to use one of the assigns, hold it down and then just turn the knob and then it assigns this matrix slot to that parameter. And then we go like this and then send the amount like this. Let's modulate these fall and rise parameters with the LFO as well, and maybe the pressure sensitivity. So we need to assign them with assign two and assign three, like that. And then we can just go ham and assign all sorts of things to those. Because this one is more of like a spectral type of sound, I usually like to pair this one with the big shimmery, spectrally type of reverbs. Let's just hear what this sounds like on the normal reverb though. Awesome, that is about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to be uploading these three uh, presets to my Patreon for my $5 supporter. So if you wanna know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. Yeah, if you enjoyed this type of video and you wanna see more of these kinds of things, also let me know. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. See you guys next time, cheers.